Now it's time to take a look at the behavior here where we're at in the game so far. And one thing I don't like is that the fish just swim off and disappear. So it's, uh, you know, at this point now I only have three, three possible chances. The game's over pretty quick. And also the fish can get killed by those torpedoes. So that's what I want to fix here in the behavior. I want to uh, first fix the fish's behavior. And that's that I no longer want it to just um, disappear when it gets to the edge of the world. Instead, what I'm going to have it do is turn around. So I have to do a couple things to implement that behavior. Um, the first thing I'll call is just turn 180 degrees. But that's a rotation by 180 degrees, so it's actually going to turn the image upside down. So I have to mirror that image, get image dot mirror vertically. And that'll straighten it out once it turns, because it'll turn and flip at the same time. So now the, the fish should be able to turn the other way. However, um, when I do take a look at um, what direction I'm moving, this will still be moving in the, that direction, that positive right there. So what I want to be able to do then is make it a negative um, as well, so that it, it'll move to the left if I've turned myself. So one quick solution that I'll make is just to take this DX and, and go private with it. So I'm going to go up here and say um, private int DX. And we can initialize it to be a 1, moving to the right. And I don't need this local variable anymore because it'll refer to the private one. So what happens though is now when I flip directions, I can record this as dx becomes the negative of whatever it was. So this will switch the direction. So for example, if it was positive one, it's now negative one. If it was negative one, it's now positive one. So it keeps flipping itself back and forth. And by keeping track of it, um, that way that's the only place I need to do is make the changes when I flip the direction of the fish. I'll also flip the, the way it's moving. So it's always good to test and make sure that my assumptions are correct about it. So let's just see what happens here in the world. Hopefully it's doing the, what we expect. Yeah, now they're turning around. I'm just trying to stay out of the way of these fish here. But uh, anyways, it has the behavior we're looking for. You can also test here and see um, I'm going to go like this. Now when I flip him around, he's going to be upside down. The same problem I, I had said before about it flipping the image as well, but that's okay for testing. Um, it's just upside down. Oops. Forgot to set the direction here too. Okay. So anyways, I won't worry about testing the direction of the fish on the way back, but um, the code that it's going to hit here is it'll hit the edge of the screen so it won't move and then it would make it, it's currently negative, it's moving to the left, it would flip it to the right. Now the other thing I wanted to fix here was when I look at my game, one problem is that the fish can get killed by the torpedo. So, well they're not getting killed there, but when they do get killed by the torpedo, and nobody got, anyways, when they do get killed by the torpedo, um, they get pulled out of the game, and that's a problem for me because I'd like the shark to be the only one eating the fish. So what I'm going to do here is introduce a new concept to you in Java, which is called an interface. So to add an interface, we're going to go like this and say new class, and I'm going to call this one killable. <clears throat> Maybe not the nicest thing in the world, but it's basically describing an object which can be killed. Now, an interface is slightly different than a class. Here what I'm going to do is change this to be an interface instead of a class. Uh, instead of a class. And I'm going to remove um, all of this stuff in the middle here. Now when you do an interface, all you have to do is declare the methods inside that interface. So I only want one thing here, and that's a method called die. So what I'll know then is anybody who implements the killable interface has a method called die. I don't have to declare it here and tell you what the code does. I leave that up to the individual objects. So it's kind of like when you think about a phone. A phone has to have a way of dialing a number, so there has to be an interface that connects it to the phone line. So, you know, there was a time when we had rotary phones. That was one way of doing the interface. There was one, um, now when we do um, touch tone, but also even voice activated. Um, those are all different ways of interfacing into the phone line. And uh, we don't know exactly how each phone's going to do it, but we know that each one is capable when we ask it to dial the number. So I'll show you how you tell in Java how to do this. And that's to go back and um, 
take a look at each of these pieces here. So the first one that I'll do is the torpedo. This tells Java here that it implements the killable interface. You just state it right after your um, class that you implement the killable interface. And now you're going to get an error unless you go down here and implement the die method. And all I'm going to do for a torpedo that ends up getting hit is I'm just going to remove it from the world. So get world, remove object, this. So it's pretty basic behavior. If a torpedo dies, it just gets pulled out of the room, or I guess the world. Um, when I compile it, now there's no problem. But if I didn't have this method here, Java wouldn't like that because it's saying you don't actually override the method die. So um, that way it forces me to provide the interface of how to do it. Now the beauty of it is each object I can say how it dies differently. So for example, um, when I go and deal with, say, the, let's see who else here, um, the shark, I'm going to implement the killable interface here as well. And the shark does the same thing. It just pulls itself out of the game because the game's now over. So not, nothing too interesting just yet. But you're going to see in a, in a minute here, um, let's take a look at the fish. I'm going to add some behavior here that a fish can die, but it's going to be reborn almost instantly. So I'm going to go public void die. And of course, um, I've got the method, but that won't make it implement the interface unless I tell Java up here still that I implement the killable interface. So down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that um, fish, and what I want to have happen is when the, the torpedo hits it, it's basically going to disappear from the world and then reappear somewhere new. So basically, it'll look like it died, but it gets reborn, so that, that way the, the shark always has the same 10 fish to, to eat. So um, I'm going to do the same thing here. So let's get the world. Um, in, in this case, I'm actually wanting the ocean class. And you'll see why in a second. So I'll call the get world method. But I also have to cast it off to be an ocean. Because it's more than just a world that I want. I want the subclass that we call ocean. So by doing this, it's telling Java, I'm getting a world, but I'm casting it to the specific kind, which is an ocean. And the reason I want that is I want access to my get safe fish location method so I can reuse it. So I'll say ocean dot remove object um, this, take the fish out, and then I'll go location safe equals um, ocean dot get safe fish location. And let's see here. How about we make it, uh, I suppose we could still, I don't know, let's say, um, let's go two, maybe 200 pixels from the shark. And I need an equal sign in there, of course. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little less, maybe 150. But anyways, um, I'll get my safe location. And then I'll put the fish back in. So fish f is a new fish. And then I'll say f dot, sorry, um, ocean dot add object. Add that fish to the safe locations x. And the safe locations y. So now this. Um, puts the fish in a new location. Um, and actually, you know what, I don't need to, um, now that I think about it, I'm going to change this slightly. Um, rather than take it right out and put it back in, um, I'm going to instead just set the location. So I'll go like this and say um, set location. So that's going to take this fish and put it in a new location. That's probably a little more efficient than taking it out and putting it back in. I'll just move it. So that's basically the behavior. 
I'll uh, compile it here and let you see what it's going to do this time. Um, I'll take one of these fish and I'll put it, uh, I guess I'll have to wait for a torpedo. So I'll wait for a torpedo here. Sorry buddy, but uh, you are a demonstration. So it did disappear, but if you count the fish, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, let me just see here. One. Hmm. Oh, I realize what my problem is. I'm doing this interface without having uh, connected it to everybody. So um, that behavior is not being seen yet because we haven't changed the way the torpedo um, destroys things. So let me go back to my destroy method. Um, apologize for that. And um, it's basically going to do the same thing where if it collides, I'll destroy it. But down here, rather than just removing the one object, we're going to make this one a little bit more robust. And the way I'll do that is I'll get only killable objects. That's all I want to deal with now, or if I have a killable. And notice that that'll deal with every possible thing that can be destroyed. So in my game, the shark, the torpedo, and the fish can all be killed. So that's um, going to call those three classes, even though I'm only calling the one here killable. So it'll pull everything out of there that's killable and um, that'll test if it's uh, at least found one of them. But here I'm actually going to take all of them out. So I'm going to use the get intersecting objects method and what it does is it returns a list. So I'll call this one um, a list of type killable get intersecting objects and in order to use the list you have to import it. So up here we'll tell Java where to find that code And now that I've got that list, I'm going to traverse through, and I'll, um, I will i don't want to call remove anymore, because that's me as the torpedo deciding what to do. And I'm going to ask the object itself. I'm going to say, I don't know how you die. You show me. So the way it's going to look, um, I guess I'll use a for loop here. So this will traverse through the whole list, basically going through each piece of the list. And instead of removing the object, what I'm going to do instead here is I'm just going to ask that object. I'm going to say list.get the object I just had and die. Because it's from the killable interface, I know that it has to have this method. So even though it's coming from many different types of classes, I know that I can count on them all having this method called die. So that way each one can have a different behavior, even though I'm only having to call one different thing. And that's pretty powerful if you think about it, because otherwise you'd have to use this if um, list.getn is an instance of, whoops, you know, fish. And then you'd have to do an if else statement all the way through and check to make sure you're using the right objects. And then you'd have to implement each behavior. And then who manages it? Is it the torpedo that decides how they die? Or shouldn't the object know how to die? So again, this is much, much better as a programming uh, paradigm that we use the interface to do that. So I don't think I need the, the world anymore because I'm not just calling on removing it. The objects will take care of themselves. So we'll just compile and make sure. And now let's see if we can get a... Um, get that kind of behavior happening where the fish should reappear. Oh, well there, I don't even need to move them. So let's see what happens here. One, two, go. And I don't know if you notice them pop back up, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there still are the ten fish. They just got moved after they died. Um, it'll still make the shark disappear because we implemented the same behavior. And if two torpedoes collide, they would do the same thing. So, um, Anyways, in this lesson, the key ideas there that we're looking at is how to build an interface. And remember, that's to declare it instead of as a class, but an interface, and to just declare the methods, not define how they, how they work with their source code. You can put as many methods as you want um, here, right? Like get lives. Every time you add a new method, every subclass now has to go and implement this. So if you all of a sudden changed your um, design a little bit by putting this one method in the killable interface, now if I try and run my project, I'm going to get an error on each of these classes that says they implement the killable interface because they're missing that. So it's kind of like another way of reminding you, okay, now that you put it here, 
here's where you track down all the classes that need to have this method that's missing. So um, interfaces are nice and simple like that. You just declare them and you let the objects themselves handle the code. And the way that they tell Java is through this implements killable and then here's where I've implemented the method from the killable interface. And again, I could have put more methods in there if it made sense for my project. So I'll make more use of this interface as we go on, but at this point you should hopefully be able to continue to work with lists and um, loops. And here's where I've added another list and loop to my program. And as well as use an interface and create your own interface in your game.